Oh, great. Okay, great. Thanks, Lucy. Yes, thanks everyone for joining and hopefully you get one or two small nuggets uh, from this webinar. Um, we also have uh, design engineers here. You can chat your questions and they'll answer those uh, as the presentation is going forward. Um, and I know there's a lot of people with a lot of experience out there. So uh, if you have a specific application, please ask and hopefully you can go away with one or two nuggets uh, from this webinar. So uh, yeah, so uh, I think you can go to uh, slide six, Lucy. Uh, yeah, two, sen two sentences about Sierra. So we operate from Sunnyvale and Wisconsin. And so we go from prototype manufacturing to volume manufacturing in Wisconsin. and. We do, we are NADCAP, ITAR, you know, all of that. So especially for military folk or high complex uh, PCBs, I think we're a good fit that way. Uh, and we also do assembly as well. So a full turnkey, if you will. So when the board is critical plus the assembly and, and you want one person to be responsible for everything, um, you know, that's, uh, I think we were a good fit there. So, uh, yeah, slide six, we can get started with the webinar. So really for uh, operating uh, voltages and applications for high voltage PCBs, anything that's higher than 100, or about 100 volts, we would consider as uh, an NHV design. And so you definitely always follow safety and reliability measures. And uh, I, you would find yourself in one of these kind of categories um, or end applications um, with high voltage um, application. Uh, slide seven. So some of the design challenges, um, you know, the direct arc over or the corona uh, can can occur. And a direct arc over occurs suddenly when the voltage potential between the two conductors exceeds the ionization value of the insulator between them. And a corona is an electrostatic discharge caused by the ionization of the surrounding air and material that degrades the insulation material. So in order to avoid these, uh, consider your operating frequency. So arcing can happen at lower voltage and high frequency. You need to ensure that the conductors have optimum clearance between them. Uh, altitude uh, at the, which the op application operates. So creepage and clearance distances vary with the height from the sea level. Uh, cleanliness, uh, exposure to dust and moisture can increase the risk of direct arc over and corona. Um, you can use a fan to maintain cleanliness. Uh, you can increase spacing as much as possible. Uh, and then we talk about cleanliness also at the later half of the presentation. Uh, consider operating temperature and size and weight uh, of your board. Um, slide eight. So these are the regulatory standards for high voltage designs. The two most important standards are the IPC 2221B, um, which includes uh, um, some details in the IEC UL 6950, second edition. I mean, you should be familiar with these uh, standards, I guess, for best board design. Slide nine. So importance of the comparative tracking index, it's the one of the most important parameters to consider when choosing the materials for your high voltage designs. It's the voltage at which the PCB substrate begins to break down. Uh, so above the CTI, the material begins to carbonize and becomes more conductive. Uh, this increases leakage current and accelerates the breakdown uh, over time. 
So the table shows um, the material groups for the CTI levels. And if the operating voltage of your design is greater than 600 volts, you need to choose a material that falls under CTI zero group. So, uh, apart from the CTI, here are the other selection parameters that you need to consider. So, high resin uh, prepregs for inner layers. Um, and then we name some glass styles. Uh, and then high TG materials uh, to avoid thermal damages. Uh, high dielectric breakdown, high tensile strength. Uh, so these are some of these are just, uh, I would say, just good rules of thumbs, uh, but also still important for high high voltage PCBs. Uh, resistance to chemicals and oxidation, cap resistance, low outgassing, um, et cetera. So you have to consider the aging. Um, so the aged voltage ratings, uh, which we get down, which we get into more detail. Uh, slide eleven. Uh, so for material selection of HEV PCBs, uh, small glass weave allows for high resin penetration. It prevents the micro bubbles, improves density in the multilayers, uh, ensures a void free uh, lamination, and it inhibits the corona effect. So heavy copper weights are used to withstand high currents and enhance mechanical strength. And the layers should be isolated using high resin prepreg to reduce the voids. Um, and to minimize the effects of material outgassing, you can uh, slow bake a finished board. Um, and uh, that helps a lot. Uh, you can also do an additional bake. Uh, at 300F for 46 hours if your board operates at low atmospheric pressures or vacuum. And then something not mentioned here is uh, if you're not going to use your boards right away or assemble them right away, make sure you vacuum, vacuum pack them and add a desiccant. Uh, and that should be on your fabrication drawing. Uh, slide 12. So uh, you, if you've attended more of our webinars, you know that we uh, really push our material selector. I think it's an important uh, discussion. And so we're gonna go through a quick demo uh, by uh, Jeevan. The materials, uh, Sierra circuits provide a material selector which can be used to search and filter for the flex and rigid material based in the database as per your design needs. If you click on the go button without selecting any filters, the table will list out all the material present in the database. As you can see, there are various uh, selection criteria for selecting a dielectric material from this material selector. First is the material type. As you can see, there is a flex and rigid option under the board type. There is, you can select all if you want a dielectric material with halogen based, or you can select yes if you don't, if you want a dielectric material which is halogen free. There is a checkbox which you can click if you want a dielectric material which is having very high thermal conductivity. Under electrical properties, we have uh, speed loss characterization under which the dielectric materials are uh, grouped. You can see normal speed, medium speed, high speed, and very high speed. 
we have dielectric constant, dissipation factor, CTI class, dielectric electrical strain under electrical properties. Under thermal properties, we have glass transition temperature, decomposition temperature, coefficient of thermal expansion in x, y direction, coefficient of thermal expansion in z direction, and thermal conductivity. Under chemical properties, we have moisture absorption. You can click on all if you want uh, all the materials, or if you, you can click on yes if you want a calf resistant material. Under mechanical properties, you have tensile modulus, tensile strength, flexural strength. There is also option given to select the family name and, and manufacturer from which you can select a dielectric material. We also have IPC number and slash number. When we consider high voltage PCB applications, there are certain factors which are which become prominent. For example, under electrical properties, we have CTI class voltage. CTI gives a measure of the materials resistance to the formation of uh, electric tracking on the surface of the material. We also have dielectric electric strength, which gives the measure of the electric field a board can withstand before the electric breakdown. Since we are considering the high voltage PCBs, we can see that under CTI class, various uh, categories have been given like CTI 0, CTI 1, CTI 2, CTI 3 and CTI 4. And the voltage ranges have been given against all the categories. So we'll select CTI 0. Under dielectric electric strength, we'll select around 900. Under thermal properties, we have the factor called coefficient of thermal expansion in said axis. We will select around 200. You can see the thermal conductivity. So under thermal conductivity, we have normal, high, and very high. When the PCB is operated under high voltage, it leads to high temperature generation. So if we require uh, the the board not to break down. So we need to have a dielectric material which is having a very good thermal conductivity. So we will select high. We will click on go. As you can see, the materials have been filtered out based on the selection criteria. You can click on view to see the data sheet of the material and its properties. There is a checkbox given to compare different materials. You can click on the checkbox and click on compare. As you can see, it gives the comparison of all the selected materials so that you can compare these materials side by side with the properties. Also, the option is given under units where you can select imperial or metric as per your convenience. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for that demo. So, you know, the material selector comes in handy. Um, it also pretty much is materials that we have on in stock. Uh, so I think it's a great, it's a great tool. Uh, I think eventually we will tie our stack up tool with the material selector tool in more detail. So, and to our inventory, so you'll know uh, especially in prototype phase, what uh, if we have that material and then for volume as well. So uh, materials are always uh, a key part of your circuit board uh, design. And uh, so let's go to slide 13, talk about solder mask. So solder mask and uh, cover coats, uh, that solder mask acts as an insulator for the HV PCBs, uh, and especially for fine pitch type of applications. Uh, when you define your solder mask in your layout, the dielectric strength requirement is uh, 500V uh, per DC mil, minimum single coat thickness, 
is around half a mil. Uh, so if you want a one mil minimum thickness on your solder mask, it requires two coats of solder mask right now in our manufacturing, which can lead to other defects. Uh, so be uh, be cognizant of that and ask if the one mil minimum thickness is manufacturable for your design. Uh, double and triple coating to increase the voltage rating. So again, make sure that's possible for your design application. Uh, and then the thickness of the solder mask depends on the finished thickness of the copper layer. Um, and which goes back to multiple coats, basically, if you have thicker copper. And then for HP designs, uh, you can implement Kapton cover coats instead of solder mask. Uh, Kapton is available in uh, one, two, three, and five mil thick sheets uh, with very high voltage per mil ratings. Uh, and then, you know, choose. The solder mask uh, is a critical part of the board uh, in HP applications as well as assembly. Make sure that you're following the design rules that your fabricator can use to manufacture so they're not uh, gang relieving or, you know, making too many modifications to your solder mask layer. That's uh, super important. So slide 14. Um, I, if you can, if you can do it, um, uh, if you have a, if you can uh, do it for budgetary and application purposes, Enig is a thinner finish. It's smoother for fine, better for fine pitch, uh, things like that. If it's, if it's apl applicable to your application, um, if you have a thin board and you're doing something like a hassle, hassle can be very aggressive on the board and can cause, be a root cause for failure, uh, as well as, um, you know, you're, you're dunking the board into, you know, a hot bath. So it's like a thermal excursion. So, you know, if you have a lot of copper and you're applying hassle, you know, the heat gets uh, absorbed into all that copper and can lead to uh, subsequent failures. Uh, so just be careful about the surface finish hassle uh, and only really use it when you need to. That's my tip. Uh, so conformal coatings uh, also provide insulation and allow for high voltage uh, gradients and closer track spacing. Uh, we don't do conformal coating in-house. We outsource it, uh, but we can manage that process. And uh, conformal coating has logistical issues with it, like make sure that the boards are properly cleaned prior to coat. And also make sure your board design is good prior to coat, because after that, it becomes very difficult to rework. So... Yeah, there's also some uh, different techniques. Um, so like um, Paraline and the others are listed there on the right. Uh, slide 15. So for creepage, uh, the creepage is the shortest distance between two conducting parts of a PCB along the surface of the dielectric material. And materials with a high CTI have a lower minimum creepage requirement and allow for shorter distances between two conductive parts. Clearance is the shortest distance between two conducting components through the air. And it depends on the PCB material voltages and operating environment conditions like uh, humidity and dust. Uh, insufficient creepages and clearances can result in flashover or arc. Um, we'll get to cleanliness as well a little later. Uh, slide 16. I think we're switching over to a tool demo at this point.
So uh, we have PCB conductor spacing and voltage calculator tool, which calculates the required minimum spacing for a given voltage uh, between the conductors for a given conductor geometry. This tool calculation is based on the spacing guidelines given in the IPC 221B table 6.1. You can refer to this table to select the type of conductor geometry corresponding to the IPC title. For example, we'll select conductor on internal layers. Since we are dealing with the high voltage PCB application, let's put maximum voltage between copper features as 1000 volts. We we'll click on spacing. So the required minimum spacing for a maximum voltage is 64 mils. Similarly, we'll select the external conductors uncoated. Click on calculate spacing. So for a maximum of 1000 volts, the required minimum spacing is 210 mils. Also, we will select the external conductors solder mask coated. Click on spacing. So in this case, the required minimum spacing is 96 mils for the maximum voltage of 1000 volts. You can also reverse calculate for the same calculator. For example, let's put the required minimum spacing as 150 mils and click on calculate voltage. So the voltage is 1440 volts for the required minimum spacing of 150 mils for an external conductor solder mask coated. Let's select conductor on internal layer. Click on calculate voltage. In this case, the voltage is 1894.7684 volts. Similarly, we'll select external conductor uncoated. Click on calculate voltage. In this case, the maximum voltage will be 700 volts for 150 mil spacing. From this calculation, we can come to the conclusion that the internal conductor layers have a better voltage capability than the external conductors. Also, uh, under the external conductors, solder mask coated geometry has better voltage capability than the uncoated. You can click on the help button to view the content of that particular parameter. You can also switch between the units provided in the drop downs volts or kilovolts. Also for the minimum spacing, you can have mils, inches, millimeter, and centimeter. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that quick demo. So slide 17. So factors that affect the creepage and clearance include the working voltage. Pollution degree, insulation, um, it includes dielectric materials, encapsulating resins, conformal coating, solder masks, et cetera. Um, so creepage requirements for various working voltages and pollution degree and standard material group is shown in this table. Uh, you know, and I think all these have been incorporated into the tool. Uh, slide 18. So controlling uh, the pollution so that, you know, higher the pollution, higher will be the creepage and clearance requirements. So IEC 60947 standard classifies pollution degree into four categories with four being the most contaminated and one the least. Um, so, uh, you know, you have a table here that kind of explains all that. And, um, you know, in high vacuum environments, outgassing can cause pollution. Uh, so it becomes a challenge, uh, cleanliness becomes a challenge. Um, so you can uh, use the low outgassing materials, plus you can do extra baking. And uh, also for our customers, we go through a lot of extra cleaning steps in the manufacturing process. Uh, above and beyond what is considered uh, normal. Uh, slide 19. So the IPC uh, 
triple two one B clearance considerations are here. Um, so this will help you set your design rules and perform design rule checks and electrical rule checks uh, for your minimum requirements. Uh, so uh, we included some pictures from there so you can kind of get a look of that. Uh, slide 20. So in regards to component selection and placement, so always incorporate components rated for high power with high breakdown, breakdown voltages. Um, and then, you know, you have to derate them for a longer life. So derating means to operate a device at a lower than its rated maximum capability to prolong its life. So if a component is rated for a maximum voltage of 10 volts, then you should consider a voltage rating of five to seven maximum while using it in your designs. Ensure safe distances between components uh, due to the high voltage field stresses. And then prefer short lead components that have reduced series inductance. This ensures good electrical performance and increases safety, reliability, and signal integrity. Uh, position components for the short return pass to improve EMC. Reduce voltage stress across components by multiplying its count. For example, if, if you have a quarter inch long um, resistor with a voltage large enough to arc, place two quarter inch uh, resistors in series. This distributes the voltage across the two components and solving the arcing problem. Uh, implement high, silicon, high temperature silicon potting and employ silicon wires that are rated for HV in your design. So lastly, uh, heat sinks, thermal copper pads, and TIMS can be used for heat dissipation. Uh, slide 21. So, in, you know, always choose appropriate creepage and clearance distances as per standards in between all copper features, board edges, and cutouts. Uh, for layout and planning, for layout planning, um, go with uh, SMT components and, and ensure sufficient clearance and insulation between them. Place the HV and LV circuits on top and bottom sides of the board respectively to mitigate the chances of flashover or arcing. Avoid using sharp edged terminal pads and sharp angled traces uh, as they accumulate charges. Uh, have polygon pores in different parts of your PCB for better heat dissipation and adequate clearance from copper features. Uh, wide HV traces can be routed on internal layers with lesser clearance than outer layers because of the better insulation. Use, uh, you know, elliptical or circular pads and uh, curve traces for increased clearances. Uh, to increase creepage distances, employ parallel sided notches, isolation slots, V grooves, uh, insert uh, insulating barrier materials, um, et cetera. Actually, for V grooves, uh, we can now laser a V groove uh, pretty easily, so you can use that as an option as well, although it would cause lots of volatiles. So maybe that's not a good idea. Uh, slide uh, 29. I'm oh, sorry, slide 22, my mistake. Uh, layout planning continued. Isolate the HB areas physically by using isolation slots, rise slots, insulated barriers uh, to prevent excessive damage due to arc over. Uh, decrease the voltage across the board gradually to distribute the electrical field strength. Uh, voltage floating rings, field grading rings, can be used to manage the HV field distribution. And if you're working on a high power and high frequency design, both layouts need to be isolated and proper shielding barriers should be provided to prevent interference. Isolate uh, noise sources from sensitive areas of the board. Um, minimize electrical interconnects 
connectors cables to reduce transient general and coupling of high voltage fields to sensitive circuitry. Uh, slide 23. So spacing between two conducting layers in a stack up is calculated based on their electrical strength and the voltage between them. Um, down below, there's an example uh, of how, you know, you can go through the calculations to get to the thicknesses that you want. Uh, slide 24. Uh, so, you can control your thickness variation with pre-laminated cores uh, or copper-cladded cores um, with reduced layer counts. You know the prepregs will also reduce, and you know this is just guidelines. Uh, but more prefregs result in thickness variation while building the stack up um, due to the cavities created by the copper. So that's true. You can use more cores to control your thickness variation better. So You should ask the manufacturer to ensure clean surfaces and edges, dirt, rough edges with burrs, et cetera. It can all increase the um, scratches, et cetera, can decrease the arc over voltage by 70-80%. So you can follow these additional rules uh, as well as you know make a cleanliness note on your fab drawing. Slide uh, 25. There's also some assembly considerations listed here. So same concept, same idea. Uh, sharp points in solder fillets can lead to arcing. Um, if voltage requirements need bigger solder joints, you can use conductive caps or dielectric layering to reduce the local electric field gradient. Um, and so these also should be on your assembly drawing. You can place plastic sleeving to prevent contact and arcing between conductive features. Uh, again, focus on cleanliness um, and what kind of cleanliness, not just of the factory, but what kind of cleaning do you do in the process? And then, um, Slide 26. So here are some fab notes uh, for HV boards. Um, it's just a guideline. Um, so we mentioned a few of these things before. Um, you know, if you're going to have cutouts and slots, you know, have a separate layer specifically that includes all of that and include it on your fabrication drawing as well. Uh, so I won't read through all these, but these are all uh, good um, good um, guidelines for your fab notes. And some more fab notes. Uh, key things are again, you know, material standards, cutout information, you know, all that type of stuff should be there. Slide 28. Okay, so grounding and EMI considerations. So proper grounding minimizes risks from ground loops, EMI, voltage, transients, and ESD at high voltages, especially in the uh, high, high voltage, high frequency board designs. Consider these design tips. Have large and separate ground planes for HP and LD sections to reduce noise and aid thermal management. Use galvanic isolation to transfer signals between two sections with different ground potentials. Example, transformers and optocouplers have separate analog and digital grounds that are connected at a common point. Use multi-point grounding at high frequencies. Keep ground planes adjacent to signal planes for minimizing current return paths. Connect components directly to these planes through a low impedance path to minimize ground loops. 
incorporate uniform ground planes without splits, slots, et cetera, to minimize voltage drops and improve SI. Keep the ground traces wide and short. Slide 29. So use ground plane vias via stitching to reduce EMI and enhance heat dissipation. Implement star grounding at low frequencies. Effectively place bypass capacitors close to component supply pin to reduce ground bounds. Place decoupling capacitors near the IC power supply points to stabilize the input voltage. Pot high voltage components. Uh, implement guard traces to reduce crosstalk. Form a common ground plane by copper pouring any free space. Incorporate ferret beads and capacitor filters on power traces to in series with analog circuits to provide shielding and reduce EMI. Um, and then utilize arc suppression resistors, capacitors, protection diodes to safeguard circuits and manage ground faults at multiple locations. Uh, slide 30. So here are some safety measures um, for uh, high voltage systems. Um, and uh, I won't read through all of these, but they will be for your reference. Uh, slide 31. So there are some testing uh, that you can do for the HV boards. So you can do insulation resistance tests, voltages is applied across full board to read to induce current flow and measure and verify products insulation. You can do high potential testing. Um, so whether your dielectric can withstand those voltages, um, et cetera. And you can do um, ionic contamination testing, uh, which is uh, really important uh, and would require extra process steps. And um, so I think, you know, if you have a high voltage application, definitely talk to us and, and alert us to that situation. And we would make changes to our process flows and especially to the testing that we do and the cleanliness uh, requirements as the boards are processed. So uh, I think that kind of covers it. Slide 32. We're always actively working on our knowledge base design guides um, to provide, provide you guys more information to uh, improve your designs and reduce the number of design spins that you have. So please uh, check out all the latest and greatest things. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Amit. Um, I see that we have some questions in the Q&A section. Um, Hemnandan, maybe you and your team can answer live. And yes, uh -huh. we are going to send you the slides and the recording tomorrow. Amit, I see there's a question. What is the FPT uh, test? This is about flying prop testing, so maybe you can explain. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, definitely ask your questions. Uh, I think we'll circle back after talking to our electrical engineering teams, our manufacturing teams, and our testing teams um, to give you the best technical answers we can give you. Um, but uh, FPT is just flying probe test, so we do that um, at the time of bare board as well as at the time of um, assembly after assembly. 
So, um, yeah, some basics. That's a basic thing. Um, but all the other questions, we see them. They're all really good. Uh, and uh, I'd like to circle back with our cross-functional teams at Sierra to give you the best answers. The more questions, the better. We can answer all of them at the same time. And I think we can send out everyone's questions and answers at one time. Any other, uh, anything else, Lucy? I think that was good. I think the questions are still coming in actually. Yes. Um, there was a slight question just first. Oh yes, the slides. We, yes, we're going to send you the slides tomorrow and the recording. Uh, I'm not done. Do you know the answers to these questions? And if so, uh, you need to say yes. They're really, um, they're really cross-functional. So I, I think we should regroup and get uh, the process engineers, manufacturing engineers, and test engineers internally. Yeah, so we can send, yeah, we can send it across the detailed answers like after some time. Yeah, they're Will very. It take some really, time to answer this briefly and. Uh, Yeah, some of the answers that were given already are good, and then I think we need to circle back on the other others. Okay. Very good. Yeah. James, Mark, and Alex, uh, we get back to you in a couple of days. Well, thank you everyone for attending, and uh, slides and recording tomorrow, and then you can just reply to the email if you have more questions. And then make sure that someone replies. Lucy, you should uh, advertise the next uh, class or webinar, see if people are interested. Uh, yes, absolutely. You know what? That's a good idea. Uh, so I don't know if you guys know, but uh, every year we do webinars with uh, speakers like Rick Hockey, Dan Baker, and uh, this year, let me stop the presentation and show you my screen. If you go on our website, under resources, you can go to events. And uh, you're going to see all the upcoming seminars that we have. So, you know, we have one uh, with Dan Bieber on the MC and PC design. We have one with Ken Wyatt, one with Keysight, uh, Kevin Kurtz. Um, I'm sure, you know, these guys are all very renowned speakers, notably at PCB West. Then we're going to have, uh, at Sierra Circuits in our facilities, we're going to have Vern discuss DFM for Flex. And uh, also another seminar with Susie. So except for the seminar with Vern, everything else is going to be online on Zoom. So wherever you are, you can just register and attend. I'll send you a link tomorrow. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining. And um, have a good day. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Hernanda. Yeah, thanks, Susie.